The Anzacs have arrived. That was the message which flashed round the world as ship after ship steamed into Suez. They'd come 10,000 miles, swiftly, secretly, one of the greatest armies that has ever travelled as a single unit. Many are veterans, leavening the cream of Australia's young manhood, advanced guards of the Southern Cross. Nurses travelled on each ship but could find no work, and no wonder. desert, a vast township of huts and canvas awaited them. Planned by the British Army, it was built by native labor. Here, under ideal conditions, they'll complete their training as more huts are rushed up for others who'll follow them. More liners brought the junior partner of Anzac, the New Zealanders. Only a few months ago, these vessels were carrying wealthy holidaymakers on world cruises. Now, from every porthole, smiles a bronze, healthy son of New Zealand. Young men of the empire, rallying to the motherland as their fathers did 25 years ago. The inevitable bum boats appeared with the usual Egyptian salesmen whom only an Abedonian could resist. On behalf of the British government, Mr. Anthony Eden was there to welcome Anzac, first greeting General Freyberg, VC, New Zealand Commander-in-Chief. Popular Dominion Secretary, after conveying His Majesty's congratulations, told the men they were giving the bravest possible answer to the Nazi attack on civilization. The New Zealanders began the final stage of their journey as they disembarked to join the Allied Army of the Middle East. Pith helmets are essential against the fierce sun that will soon shine in these latitudes. What lies ahead for General Freyberg's fine army, only the future will tell. Every sane man prays that no drop of their blood will be shed. If it be otherwise, then the new flower of Anzac will march to victory again. <laughs> <laughs>